So everyone wondering it now, how Perry's entrance into this field is going to shake it up. Joining us now to break it all down, Ford O'Connell, former presidential campaign manager and chairman of Civic Forum PAC, and Christy Setzer, former Iowa press secretary for Vice President Al Gore and president of New Heights Communications. Welcome to you both. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. All right, Christy, I'll start with you. Uh, who has the most to lose by Rick Perry getting in in the GOP field? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, because right now it's pretty clear that the Republican Party is having this classic head versus heart debate. I think their heart says Michelle Bachman, their head says Mitt Romney. Um, Rick Perry might be the guy who can kind of split the middle, but he does have two major things working against him. One is I think uh, a lot of Americans are going to be pretty weary of uh, another smooth talking Texan talking about the way he's going to change the ways in Washington. And I think the second thing is uh, simply just the calendar. I mean, I know it's it's August of 2011 right now. It seems like there's a long time. But in fact, uh, to run an effective campaign in Iowa, you really need to do a lot of grassroots work and, uh, you know, picking up precinct captains, that sort of thing that it, he may or may not have the time for at this point. Yeah, and maybe he scoops up some of Pawlenty's supporters. We'll have to wait and see as others get in and out of the race as well. Uh, but Ford, you know, there is a lot of talk about his record of job creation in Texas. And if that's the number one thing on voters' minds, is it a strong enough selling point for him? It's a very strong message. I mean, when you can say that you've created 40% of the jobs in the United States since Obama's assumed office, given the economy that we're in, that's a very strong message. Also, having 26 years in public office tells you that he's a strong, decisive leader who can make decisions. And I think that's what a lot of Americans want. They want a strong leader who can be decisive and make the tough decisions. I think Rick Perry is that guy. Well, oh, Christy, do you think that the White House is scared of Rick Perry at all? Uh, I think they are eager to take down this record of 26 years, uh, and that means 26 years of um, oppo that they have against him as well. Look, let's start with the job creation record. That's something that is obviously at the top of things that Rick Perry wants to tout, and it's also a little bit exaggerated. Uh, we know that some of those jobs came from the Recovery Act that President Obama championed. Uh, some of those jobs came from uh, oil company jobs that are the result of us having high gas prices. And some more of those jobs came uh, are military jobs that are the fact that uh, we're at war right now. So, you know, again, there's there's definitely some uh, some debunking to be done in his record. But certainly, for it, I mean, Texas stands out when you compare it to the other 49 states and, and what's been accomplished uh, during some rough years, the last couple of years. Uh, I want to ask you about that, whether he'll be able to stand up against, uh, you know, the charges against him and what those jobs are really about as uh, folks separate fact from fiction. And also the fact that he is abundantly evangelical. And for a lot of people within the primary field, I mean, that's they embrace that and that's what they want to see. But will he be able to sell that to a general election voter? I think he will. I think that he does have some things to work on. He has to frame his campaign in a very wise way coming out of the gate. I mean, talking about jobs is important because that is the number one issue, but he's going to have to come up with true crossover appeal. And the number, you know, the two top groups he really has to, to meet, you know, in the middle of the road is independents and Hispanics. If he can connect with independents and Hispanics, particularly in the battleground states of Florida, Colorado, and Nevada, President Obama is going to be in for a real fight. All right, and speaking of a fight, I mean, there are a lot of people think that, that Perry and Bachman are going to draw from the same group of voters. Uh, so do you think, Christy, that Mitt Romney sits back and sort of lets them duke it out a little bit? Yeah, it's interesting. I think the clear message that came out last night of the Ames straw poll results was, will the last moderate Republican please turn out the lights? Uh, this, If, in fact, there are moderate members of the Republican Party left, I think they'll be pretty easy, uneasy from last night's results, which obviously showed a clear win for uh, Michelle Bachman, but also people like Herman Cain and Rick Santorum did much better than expected. So I think if you're Mitt Romney, you look at this with a great deal of unease. Well, and that is Iowa that we're talking about, which we know is very conservative on social issues. Ford, quick last word to you. Uh, I think that we're going to see a real, I think what we're going to wind up seeing it potentially is a, is a Romney-Perry uh, head-to-head collision. And I think that what we really have to see is how Perry fares in Iowa and South Carolina. If he can scoop up those voters, this could really go to June with our new primary rules. All right. Ford and Christie, thank you both very much. We appreciate your time. Thank Thanks you. so much for having us.